Hi, my name is Shai Tuck, and I'm a Frosh at Stanford University. Today, I wanted to make a video to my old classmates and to other students from schools like mine for the topic of how to get into college. Better yet, how to get into a school like Stanford or Harvard or MIT are hardly ever discussed. In this video, I will try to provide tips and strategies that I use to get into not only Stanford, but also schools like Yale, Cornell, Columbia, and a lot of other really good schools. Now for some obvious tips. For instance, you probably need to get a decent SAT score and uh, good grades, but that's pretty obvious. But you probably shouldn't kill yourself over it. Obviously, great grades are important and it shows hard work and dedication, but anybody from any school could really get good grades if you try hard enough. So especially to my underclassmen friends, I would advise, yeah, try to get the A, try to study for whatever test you can get, try to get trade A's as much as possible and be a really competitive applicant. And if you had not the best start, say freshman year or sophomore year, as long as you have that upward trend of having straight A's, say your junior, senior year, showing you, you struggled, but you tried is something that's really important. But also some people like me, when they see all these stats about SAT scores or ACT scores, saying, oh, it's so hard, I have to get a perfect on my SATs or ACT, you're practically there. Uh, I would say try not to stress too much about that. I'm not going to tell you my SAT scores per se, but I did not get solid 700s or higher on every single um, topic, even on my subject tests. So I would tell you, you don't need to stress about SATs. Make sure you study, make sure you try to do as well as you can, because they do help. But it's how well-rounded of an applicant you are, how um, good your grades are, how much you try in school. It's less um, aptitude, but more attitude. They look for that. Those are the type of students who will succeed at Stanford. So this advice goes out to seniors and some of you underclassmen who are thinking ahead. Um, when your app says, okay, what's your favorite book or what's your favorite movie or author, or whatever, make sure to be unique in your application. Don't just say, oh, I loved Hamlet and Shakespeare. Shakespeare's works are what made my life. You can mention that, of course, especially if that's true, but you look very dry if you say, yes, my favorite news article is the New York, New York Times, and my favorite book is uh, Romeo and Juliet, and I love Othello and o Odyssey. Yes, you've probably read them in school. You might have even liked them, but it's what everyone's saying, and you're probably coming off as very fake and pretentious in your application if you say that. For instance, I said, um, I mentioned, yes, I, well, I did like The Great Gatsby. I also liked um, Shirley Good Joking, uh, Mr. Feynman from uh, one of Feynman's, Richard Feynman's works. And that's been one of my favorite books, as well as Riding Rockets, which is pretty profane, honestly, but I highly recommend it if you haven't read it and you get into rocketry and space at all. It's a really great read, really great autobiography, but it's not the most academic work. But looking for well-rounded students who aren't just study, who don't just say, oh, I'm going to stick to the books and be a normal person. They're looking for those outliers, the unique people. That's what makes you different from everyone else. The, willing, the willingness to say, yes, I like to read eggs and ham, and I also like Shakespeare. It's that make sure that they're looking for. So be unique uh, and don't just stick to what you think is a right. There are no right and wrong answers for this, these questions on the app. Also, when thinking about your application, you need to make sure you convey what makes you tick, even if that's not necessarily 100% in your field. For instance, if you love interpretive dance but want to major in physics, it's great and honestly can make you stand out in a crowd. For instance, one of my friends is a very talented opera singer, but is going to major in computer science. But her vocal talents almost certainly made her different from me and, and many other less talented applicants in the pool, and probably allowed her to get into Stanford and be that unique person, because she's both a very talented and accomplished computer scientist, but also really enjoys opera and can make everyone's jaws drop with just the sound of her voice. And honestly, in most cases, you can relate the two, your two passions. For instance, in that interpretive dance example I gave earlier, you can say, well, I love to map out the physics behind dance. I love to see um, what the torque is being applied on the body when they are dancing. And that's perfectly great. That, that shows your passion and how you can relate your interests to what it is professionally you want to do. Uh, or on the opposite side, you can at least show uh, how one made you better. So your weird talent made you better. For instance, I personally did debate for about four years throughout my high school career. And I actually became the captain of my school's debate team. But despite this, I want to be an engineer as given through my shirt. 
So obviously those two don't necessarily go together unless I want to be a patent lawyer, which I don't want to do. Uh, but rather than skipping mentioning my debate team and how much I've been involved with, de with debate, I stated, well, it helped me grow as a person, as a public speaker, because before I went to debate, I had um, a speech impediment and I talk really fast. I still kind of do, but I've kind of grown past that. I've less afraid of speaking in public, which was a big problem for me. And I felt like it had a lot for me to grow, knowing on public policy and all of these things as well. So it allowed for me to be a much more, di more diverse person. And over these course of four years, I have become one of the best debaters or most most um, most points, at least in the National Forensics League, uh, versus, again, having a speech impediment and being afraid to talk in, in front of other people. So that journey was really important in my application. And, probably made me stand out versus just saying, oh, I love robots, which I do love robots because robotics is really awesome. But I didn't just say, oh, I love robots. I said, I love ro robotics, but I'm also am passionate about debate and DECA and um, just everything else I do. Uh, is, it shows, yes, I, I'm struggling in this area, and I, but I tackle my problem head on and I'm one of the best people now in this area. So my word of advice is to find your debate. Find your thing that doesn't necessarily fit the stereotype of your field and talk about that in your essay. Because again, I promise you being a mechanical engineering prospect and talking about your interests in both an engineering club, um, as well as say Taekwondo, can make you stand out amongst hundreds of applicants that are just saying, oh yeah, I really like robotics, let me tell you about that. Something else that you should probably do is look up what your college values, as a lot of time these values overlap, but some schools may think that certain things are more important than others. For instance, last year's Stanford's big thing was how much you volunteer. They want to look for people who are doing social good in, in an area, and hopefully that area is something you're passionate about. You probably shouldn't just volunteer at, say, a home shelter because it'll look good on an application, because they see right through that. Because literally thousands of people are sending an application saying, oh yes, I volunteered at a home shelter or with the elderly, but it doesn't really correlate to what they want to do, and so it comes off as fake and something that they're not really passionate about, but just doing so they stand out in a college application. So you really end up just melding with every other applicant, which is kind of the opposite of what you want to do. So you tend to want to do things that are more towards what you're passionate about, something that your career tends to be um, more so like. For instance, if you really love history, it wouldn't be such a bad idea to to volunteer at a local museum. Or I, for one, volunteered with our elementary school robotics program, and I talked about a bit about that in my application, because it combined, um, yes, volunteering, but also engineering, which I really enjoyed. And I also started my own initiative called Space Day, where me and other people in a club I started called Ast Astronomy Club uh, went to the elementary schools, and we taught them about science, and engineering, and math, and all of the fun stuff that is involved in STEM, and said, here's why science is cool. And we did that, and we raised money, and that was a big part of my application. And it wasn't necessarily because, yes, I was technically volunteering. It was also majorly because it, I was doing something I was passionate about, and I was being an entre entrepreneur in that thing. Because this, this, again, does make me stand out, as well as if you start your own initiative, it does help you stand out in a crowd, because it shows that you have enough passion and entrepreneurship to follow these types of trends when you get into college. So if you were to go to, say, Stanford, you would be able to start a similar initiative or join current initiatives and um, do be a social, social good and be a movement for change in the future. And that's what they are looking for in their new incoming students. In addition, uh, especially to my to my friends coming from Ben Davis and similar kind of low income schools, own where you come from. If you come from a low income community, don't hide it. They look for diversity in all senses in their own incoming classes. Emphasize how you did the best with what you had, even if it wasn't much, even if you didn't get to take multivariable calculus, linear algebra, or whatever, even calculus at all. Show your rags which riches story and try to give the admissions officers the feels. Um, say that although you don't know a single engineer, you don't, um, you know what you're calling based off your love for making things or other pivotal experiences in your life. And you're applying to Stanford because you want to, you want to build off those experiences that you know you love. And you want to meet other people who, who again, share your passion that you might not have um, in your community. That really can help you stand out. 
In addition, if you did a really cool program through a college that I will again talk about later, um, you should you should emphasize that program, but not just say why, what it was, say, oh, I did this program. You should say why it was important. For instance, I did MIT's Mohs Tech program. So while I, I, I should never say, oh, yeah, I just did Mohs Tech, I should say I did Mohs Tech, and it helps me grow in this way. I realized MIT was the perfect place for me. Um, all, all that to that extent of why it was important. Why are you now applying to the school? Because just doing the program isn't good enough because it doesn't show how much you've grown as a person, how much it impacted you, or why it's important in your life. So elaborate on that experience if you have it, but don't just state it and hope it speaks for itself because it won't. Speaking of those programs, if you, did, if you haven't been able to say visit campus of, of MIT, or I actually did one at Rensselaer, um, I would actually recommend doing a visit program. Those are often found in the fall. So September, October, maybe even some in November, depending on the college. If you apply early enough, they will pay for your travel to said college. For instance, again, I did Rensselaer's um, visit program and I got to see their campus. Um, while I knew it wasn't necessarily for me, I was able to say, okay, this isn't somewhere I want to apply to. This isn't somewhere I want to waste my money in the future because I don't see myself here. But I also know a lot of people who went to the same programs and fell in love. They realized, oh, this is a place I want to spend the next four years of my life. I'm going to spend all my time on this application and you have a higher chance of getting in. So this is another one of those programs that I would say, if you do it, make sure to mention it on your application and say why it was important to you. But it's a great opportunity and make sure to, to look up Google uh, Stanford fly-in program, Rensselaer fly-in program, Purdue fly-in program, or whatever it might be. Because um, they, again, do offer financial aid and most costs to cover your flights. And if not, it's still a great opportunity. So anyway, to you underclassmen. You need to make sure that you join clubs, preferably all four years, and become a leader if you can. It doesn't necessarily be, have to be in a field you want to major in. After all, as I said, I did, I did a debate, model, DECA, Model UN, even though I wanted to be an engineer. It's just because I did what I found thought to be interesting. And I know, again, several people who have the same stories of doing, becoming highly involved in something that relates nothing to what they want to do, but they just find it interesting. So do whatever you want just make sure to do it for four years or three years as long as you possibly can and become a leader show that you're an entrepreneur um start start your own club if you can that'd be really amazing making sure you stand out in a crowd if you started your own club or initiative or wh whatever you might do and even if you are saying joining the physics club and you become president uh, that's also really amazing because you're being a leader and don't just become leader of say physics club also be a leader of um of brain game and robotics and just every club you can but don't spread yourself too thin because they want to see that you're not just trying to build a resume that you're actually invested in each of these opportunities so become a leader in the things you're passionate about but do have that in the back of your mind that you want to do that um when you are underclassmen that that will be your end goal if you do want to continue pursuing the club to a full extent that will look impressive on your application. Internships and vision trips or whatever you might want to do would be amazing opportunities you could talk about in your application. For instance, I did an internship with Wright Patterson Air Force Base called Wright Scholars. I highly suggest it, especially if you live within the Midwest, because those are probably the, mo the two best summers between my junior and senior year and my senior and college year. Um, that I've, I've ever had because it showed me what engineering is and I got to get my hands on dirty stuff and I got to say oh I got to work on these cool military pro projects that I'm not allowed to talk about so that was really interesting and plus you get paid fairly well unless you do an unpaid internship which is also a great opportunity um, but any of these things will help you stand out in an application versus students who have not done research or if you're interested in health doing a mission trip or volunteering with the hospital um, these things outside of school that show you are passionate in, in a field that you're not required to do for a class or for your school for graduation um, that just shows that you are invested in your field and your major um, and it, it does show you where your passions lie for you personally because if I didn't like that my internship I did I could say okay maybe engineering is not for me what about just physics or what about health or what about something else I enjoy so this, these are great opportunities to make you stand out. And I would start looking 
again, you can typically do these between um, sophomore and junior year, or some even allow for freshman to sophomore year, and all the years above. So I'd start looking now, especially are you if you are in high school, um, as these applications do start to open, or or even close September, October, all the way through um, March, I think is one of the last deadlines, depending on what you want. And these do often have room and board, nice stipends, and they will write you letters of recommendation for college, which will be very helpful. So I would suggest you get really involved in whatever it is you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, for instance, go to you should always go to conferences, symposiums, and if you get into tech hackathons that you're interested in, um, or that you say you're interested in. So if the, for me, I again I am interested in engineering, so this is where all of my my ideas are coming from is the engineering platform. But I've gone to several hackathons, and that's been uh, important for me to learn technical skills and get connections and get cool internships and learn about what I should be doing for the next four years of my life and beyond. So hackathons are really cool opportunities if you do get into tech. You a lot of them do accept high school students, so I'd ex I would um, encourage anyone to apply to a hackathon if you have even the slight interest in techn technology, whether it be computer science straight or engineers, any type of engineering, it doesn't really matter because you're a high school student, so they they know your, your interests are probably going to change, but um, it just shows your passion. It, for us, computer science, for engineering, for all this, these things, I would highly recommend going to any hackathon you can find. Um, look, look up hackalist.org. They, they have a long list of hackathons going on throughout the year, uh, throughout the nation, and they will typically allow, fly you out. So they offer travel reimbursement if you are interested in going to their hackathon. And it's a free event, a lot of fun. You typically can get out of school. It's great. <laughs> My last piece of advice uh, applies to everyone, but especially those who don't have necessarily the most advanced classes offered at their high school. So if they don't have, say, BC Calc, or if you took it in sophomore year and you only have AP stats to go off of, and then you're not going to be able to do math your senior year or something, I'd really recommend going to community college. I didn't end up doing that personally, but I know a lot of people who did, and they were able to get a head start on their math or their physics or their chemistry or whatever they you might want. And they were able to go to, say, an Indiana IEPUI or like Ivy Tech or something and take those classes because they aren't normally as hard as a high school class or or as a real college class at say Stanford uh, but you look really really impressive being a high school student taking multi-variable calculus and linear algebra already and again in high school despite the fact you are doing it at a community college or uh, not necessarily the most reputable school ever it does show that you're willing to go out of your way to learn and you look really, really smart. And I can promise you from the kids I've talked to um, in my classes who have already taken some of the classes I am taking, you look really, really smart as a freshman already taking these really advanced courses that aren't offered in high school. So I'd really suggest you doing this because um, it will help you stand out. So that's the end of my tips, the end of my video. Uh, good luck to you applying to schools. And if you go to Stanford, good luck there too. Go trees. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. I hope you enjoyed my, I hope you enjoyed this and that you found it to be pretty useful.